All right, human geographers, we are now up to chapter 11, and we're going to take a look at industry and how that plays into human geography. Well, key issue one first starts out talking about where is industry distributed, and that's very important in understanding how it impacts the planet because we have places that have industry and don't have industry. Well, the Industrial Revolution is going to be a key point to all of this, and that is where we start seeing machines really start being made on a regular basis, and those machines help humans make products. But before that happens, the Industrial Revolution starts in our, in our homes. It's called the cottage industry. People were making products in their homes, but they were very limited. They only had so much room, and they only had so much capital, and they only had so much materials to be able to make things. So the cottage industry is where we start seeing people making products. The Industrial Revolution changes everything, because now we're going to start getting factories. But the Industrial Revolution is more than just factories. It had social, political, and economic changes. Socially, we start seeing people gain more and more freedoms during this time period. Politically, we start seeing laws that protect the average citizen. And economically, we start seeing people be able to be dirt poor and become filthy rich, like the Rockefellers and the Carnegies were able to do. Well, technology is a really key play into the Industrial Revolution. And the technology that really focus in on is the steam engine. The steam engine is created by a guy named James Watt. And this was very, very useful because prior to the steam engine, we had factories, but they ran on water. So basically, you had to have a fast-flowing stream that would turn a turbine, and you got you know, whatever product you could be making through the factory. The problem is you had to have fast-moving water and a stream. So if you didn't have those, you were very limited. The steam engine changes everything because you could place a steam engine pretty much anywhere you wanted to. So let's go ahead and see other ways that the Industrial Revolution changes things. So now we're going to look at how what industries were impacted by the Industrial Revolution. And your book gives you several. First, iron. Because of the steam engine, this allows continuous production of iron. Iron is very important because we get steel from it. Steel is able to make buildings and make locomotives and rail tracks and boats. It was used for so many different uh, objects. So it was very important to be able to start producing iron and steel. Coal becomes a major player in this because it's coal that's burned that makes the steam engine work. So when coal is burned, it heats up water, that water boils, it produces steam, the steam turns a turbine. So areas that had coal were really ripe for the Industrial Revolution to be able to occur there. Transportation completely changes because while early on people worried about using canals or small rivers to move things, now with steel and iron and coal we could build railroads and we can lay down this steel track and be able to move products anywhere you wanted. Now you didn't have to rely on having rivers or canals. Textiles change because now we have these big giant factories with these factories that can produce things we can produce a lot of textiles like clothes and bedding, sheets, objects like that. Chemicals will start to be able to be formed. Those chemicals are important because they could color clothes any way you wanted. Prior to that, you were very limited in what dyes you could find. Now, because of chemicals being produced in these factories, you can color things pretty much any color you wanted. Food processing is also going to change. We start seeing the origins of canned food. Now, they didn't use metal cans at first. They used jars. But we start seeing the mass production of being able to create food that can sit on a shelf instead of not being eaten right away. This changes things because people can start moving to cities. You can't grow food in the city, so you have to be able to get food to people. And by food processing, that allows it to happen. All right, our last section is going to talk about industrial regions. And when you look at this section, it can look really intimidating. There's a lot of places listed. It's kind of long. But you know what? Let's just really simply categorize it, and it's not bad. Now, what I have my students do is take a blank map of the world, and they color in the regions, and that really helps them out. Now, in the textbook, it breaks it down, what each region has and what they're producing, but you might see that there's a pattern. As long as you have a general idea, you're fine. So when we take a look at those industrial regions, there's three major ones. You got Europe, you got North America, and you got East Asia. Those are also the wealthier parts of the world. With Europe, it gives you a lot of areas, but if you look where they're located, it's not that bad. You got the United Kingdom, you got the Rhine River Valley area between like France and Germany in that area, and you got the Po Basin area in northern Italy. After that, it gives you some areas in Eastern Europe and in Russia. So as long as you have that general idea, you're fine. 
In North America, it really breaks it down into three areas. You've got the East Coast stretching from like New Jersey, uh, Baltimore, New Jersey area, all the way up to Boston. You've got the Great Lakes region, which is what we call the Rust Belt or the Old Steel Belt, and Southern Canada. And you've got the West Coast that stretches from San Francisco to San Diego. But those are really just the only three sections. And in East Asia, it really just focuses in on Japan and China. And China only has a couple industrial areas that are major areas within it. So it doesn't really have a lot. It's just they break it down in a lot of detail. And as long as you know the general areas, and you even know some of the products coming out of those areas, you're going to probably be fine. And uh, you'll see that that wraps up Key Issue 1.